The 33-year-old draws the 30-year-old Brazilian Antonio Carlos Jr. This 120 favorite. Brad Tavares is the even money underdog. This fight clock is brought to you by Modelo. You may have seen a tweet a moment ago. One DraftKings better has 20 large on shoe face tonight. We'll see if he cashes. These guys that bet twenty thousand dollars on underdogs, man, they're so brave, or they just have way too much money. <laughs> <laughs> Tavares has been ranked as high as number eight in the world. He fought Yoel Romero back in 2014. He was favored to beat Robert Whitaker in 2015. So, a lot of skills, especially when it comes to the stand-up game. See, this is what I'm talking about. Good work already from Carlos Jr. to use his hands to set up any possible takedowns that he expects to use in this fight. You saw. Antonio Carlos Jr. kind of throw a combination there. It didn't look like the cleanest combination, but it did get its desired results. You see Tavares having to back up. It's when you back up on a straight line is when he would throw those odd punches and then change levels into a double leg. The UFC Twitch channel is giving away a one-of-a-kind custom UFC-themed Xbox Series X. Head over to UFC.com slash sweepstakes for official rules to enter and check out the UFC Twitch channel for more ways to win. That's UFC.com slash sweepstakes to enter for a custom UFC-themed Xbox Series X. Restrictions apply. Tavares is doing a really good job of keeping the head down, foot going towards the mat as Carlos Jr. is on that, that high crotch. It's hard to finish a shot whenever your head's down and your butt's out. And beautiful flexibility as well from Tavares there. Carlos Jr. had that leg all the way up over his shoulder. He was able to punch him in the face and then pull that leg back. That's a good start for Tavares to be able to defend that takedown already. Especially when they're fresh, right? Carlos nice. Jr. is a big, strong guy. And he's going to feel stronger. Oh, that is wow. Oh, look at that. Look at that defense there from Tavares. Look at Tavares float the position. Yeah, he man. never got his feet in cement. He just continued to move backwards and float and stuff the head of Carlos Jr. And we're talking about a man who's coming off ACL surgery, DC, as well. Well, John asked him a great question in the fighter meetings about what was that first wrestling practice like after an ACL surgery? Right there, the way he defended that shows that he's very confident in the recovery that he got after having that surgery. And you do see some of that Antonio Carlos Jr. power. Sometimes people fancy him a specialist. Did have a couple knockouts on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil at heavyweight. Has yet to produce a knockout as a pro. Those were exhibition fights, but he is not a one-trick pony. And that's why he's able to get in on these shots so far, John. Even though he hasn't been able to execute them fully and get the fight to the ground, he's setting them up. He's doing the right thing so far by throwing big punches. And like you said, DC, maybe not the, the sharpest or the cleanest combinations, but they're landing. Mm -hmm. Although Tavares will take some shots. I mean, Absolutely. He's worried about that. And that's got to be discouraging for Carlos Jr. to have gotten in so deep on two occasions and has not had any success with taking Brad Tavares, Tavares down. I love how Tavares attacks the hands and he keeps his left foot on the mat. He keeps all of his weight going down, not allowing Carlos Jr. to get his leg up and start to create motion to get him taken down. Tavares is a great athlete as, as he absorbs the leg kick there. Was a star linebacker on the high school football gridiron. Oy, nice calf kick there from Tavares. Oh, that, oh, that got checked. checked. Wow, but oh. nice body kick from Carlos Jr. Showing some good stand up and then transitions into a shot. But again, Tavares oh, wow. is. He's now he's going to have more out. trouble. Yep, he's going to have more trouble defending. Oh, no, great job by yes. Tavares. Moving that lock up from underneath his butt up to around his body. And then immediately pushing on this arm, trying to break this lock from behind him. Yeah, really impressive takedown defense thus far from Tavares. And as you watch these guys fight and watch them compete and wrestle, you see that it's going to be very difficult for Shoeface to get takedowns on the legs of Tavares. He should start to look at different ways of trying to take him down. Body lock, stepping in front, tripping him. He's going to have to trick Tavares. Yeah, three for three so far on the takedown defense from Tavares. Carlos Jr. staying heavy here in the clinch. Oh. Like that was right on the cup. Stay right there. Take a step back for me. And right in front of our Take broadcast position Stay. here. Yeah, that, I mean, we heard that one. Yeah, it's not good when you okay. hear it. 
Over there. Oh, Man, take your a... time. Take your time. You see that ticker down in the bottom of your screen. As many of you know by now, Brad Tavares will have five minutes with which to recover. Okay, Brad. He's like, nah, I'm not that great. Take your time. <laughs> Just come away from your corner, please, okay. buddy. Good man. Take your time. It's a hard shot. I've Just always encouraged gentle. guys to try. Just be, Just be mindful. Try to just take as much time as you need in order to feel better when you take a shot like that because those types of shots Good. can change everything. They don't listen to you. No, no. they never do. No, they don't. <laughs> I don't know anything. All right, waning seconds of our opening round, which has had a little bit of everything. Carlos Jr. enjoying being back in competition. Around two, coming up. Towards Ray. <laughs> no, he's fine. He's good. He's good there. Some water. Hey, what? Everything is good. I'll give you some feints before you go to that one again. Like you jab him, faint, jab. You okay? Okay. Find his chest a little bit. Right. He's trying to change levels in the exchanges. Let's mix some uppercuts or some crosses to the chest. Okay. Set up your low kick off your jab hand. You understand? Yep. And he's yep. trying to check hook off our jab. You know what's there. Okay. Got a brow off him. Hey. You have to attack his head. You would have had that double if you drive through him. Don't stop driving until you hit the wall. Drive, drive, drive until you hit the wall. All right, back live for round two. Paul Felder, one of your striking coaches and one of the better head coaches in the game, Eric Nixick, with some advice for Brad Tavares there after round one. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about throwing his right hand to the chest because Carlos Jr. is obviously trying to level change off of Tavares' shots. And they want him to just put a jab out there in front of this low kick. But you can take a look at Carlos Jr.'s lead knee is already a bruised mess at this point. Yes. I mean, Carlos Jr. hangs that chin up in the look air at that when he's knee, guys. I mean, that's a bruised mess is a great way to put it. And he hasn't taken many of those kicks. Tells you the power of Tavares. And if he starts to set it up, that that's what's going to distract him and, and be able to land that a little better because... Oh! oh. Nice right hand there by Tavares. Ah, oh, there nice it is. Nice job from Carlos Jr. to time that. Tavares has got to be super careful giving up his back to try oh great job by Tavares wow wow incredible I mean My that was goodness. fantastic the way he pushed Carlos Jr. down towards his legs and just pop right back up now he's in deep on this shot he's not finishing this but we saw him defend this yeah. player by pulling him up onto his waist and then fighting the grip and getting out and turning off the cage beautifully and then throwing combinations as soon as he gets some space Paul he's got to get that lock up above his butt he cannot stay beneath the butt He's trying to dig that underhook or pull. He, pull. Look how he's lifting him up. Once he lifts him up, he's pretty safe. He's because already on the butt. If he can pull up, up up onto his lower back, he can start really fighting this takedown. The hands are already broken, it looks like. Yep, the grip is broken. That's a good start. There we go. That's got to be frustrating for yes. Carlos Jr. Well, to get your takedown finally and not being able to control Brad Tavares. But again, you know, Carlos Jr. is doing a good job of pressing him up against the octagon, landing knees, little punches and kicks, little punches and um, knees, and just working. And he's out again. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with the wrestling of Brad Javar. Incredible, so man. Under three minutes here to go in round two. He has certainly done the right work in training. A second camp in preparation of Antonio Carlos Jr. Good jab there from Carlos Jr. Oh, nice right hand. You can see the difference in the technical skills in the striking of Tavares and Carlos Jr. Carlos Jr. does a good job of throwing that jab. He's a big, long guy. He's real good leg kicks, but when he tries to string them together, he isn't as fluid. Tavares is very fluid with the jab, with the double jab, right hand. Beautiful check there by Carlos Jr. 
Two power teams going head to head here. Extreme Couture, Tavares, American top teams, Carlos Jr. I mean, the resurgence that this team in Vegas has had over the last year or so has been tremendous. Skip jab there. Gotta start with the redhead Eric Nixick. <laughs> He's got red hair, right? Yeah. Just making sure. All right. Well, yeah, Paulie, Fel Paulie Felder's got some red hair. Red <laughs> Ray Seffel's a tremendous coach. Yes, of course. I've been able to work with Coach Ray before. And yeah, I, I mean, the kickboxing level of this man is fantastic. He was giving me lots of advice today, DC, when I was hitting pads with Eric. And just the little subtleties that he's able to pick up on from his experience is incredible. Carlos is doing a really good job of finding the home for his jab. Yeah, his jab is very sharp tonight. It's so long. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, you've got to use that reach, advantage. right? Yeah, John spoke to the reach advantage of Carlos Jr. And he has used it very effectively tonight with the jab. Gear up for the rematch. All new Conor McGregor products are available now at UFCstore.com. Bid in the live auction for your chance to take home a piece of UFC history and check out our full range of equipment, including heavy bags. Nice elbow on the single leg attempt there from Carlos Jr. Inside leg kick for Tavares. Ray Sefo has been with him every step of the way in his UFC career, and Tavares still feels like people sleep on him in this John. middleweight division. John, did you just see that? LeVar Burton. Oh! Whoa, he hurt him bad. That was a desperation shot right there. That right hand hurt him bad. That came off that double jab. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I don't... He From kicked there. him there. I he saw, tried I saw, to kneel. Oh, that re that's oh. unfortunate for Brad because he had him hurt, but it happened. I'm away from your corner. No communication. So this is interesting. Stay right there. Sometimes those hurt worse than anything. Prior to that, the oh. big right hand. Oh, that beautiful right hand. That was off a left hook. And look at him sprawl right away. And you know... Carlos Jr. is going to take every oh, ounce of every time second. that he needs to recover at this As moment. As he should. Kana was moving, which resulted in that kick not landing on the intended target. God, those fans sound good. Every really last good. one of you. There's more people in here tonight than they've been for the last two shows. And I mean, everybody's socially Carlos, distanced. Not your call over here, please. Everybody's got their masks and safe, but boy, right. they came out early tonight. They did. And we're just getting started. Just over a minute has gone by since the inadvertent groin strike. Timing. We'll see the extent to which Carlos Jr. has recovered. Waning seconds of round two. Oh, he's good now, though. The cobwebs are a little clear. That right hand ain't going to help matters for the Brazilian. You hear, you hear the corner saying 1-1-2 one, one, to Tavares would be jab, jab, right hand. If he lands that, he can hurt him again. Nice jab from Tavares. Round three, coming up. We probably lost two rounds. You have to go after it. One good takedown is all we need. One good takedown. Let's put him on the floor. We need to get a locked hand double. We need to pinch your elbows. Drive. Put him on that wall and pinch your elbows. You got to pinch him tight. Don't let those eye, those elbows come up. Hey, back to your calf kick. He hasn't checked one yet. Got to go back. One, two, half feet out. Down the plate. Let's go right now. Brad, give me a little bit of angles in this one, okay? Look sharp. Stay sharp. Round three is brought to you by P3, the official protein snack of UFC. Nice technical advice there from Mike Brown to Antonio Carlos Jr. Inside leg kick for Brad Tavares. Mike yeah. Brown looking for the double leg DC, and he's talking about pinching those elbows when he gets in. Yeah, he's got the elbows flaring, and he's not collecting the hips. 
of Brad Tavares. I mean, but Tavares is so flowing. When he's in the stand-up, his head's moving always off the center line. Outside of a jab, Carlos has not landed much of anything else, anything of substance. You know, Carlos Jr. is checking these kicks, but he's checking them almost right on the kneecap and in, in that sensitive area of the knees. Not getting his shit on there. So even though it might also hurt Brad a little bit, it is definitely damaging that lead knee. Carlos Jr. unofficially one for seven on his takedown attempts thus far. Nice jab there from Tavares. And Carlos has landed shots, right? He has done a good job of landing punches, but he needs to get this fight to the ground. And, 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 and the problem is his positioning. Look at his positioning. Look at all that space between his hips and Tavares' hips. His head is down towards the mat. You don't get your head and chest in front of your legs when you're wrestling. You got to work from the butt up. Everything needs to be in. The butt needs to be the hips, but everything in. Start to get close, create angles. Ricky Simone did that beautifully the other day. He never broke position when he was trying to score takedowns, and it led to him getting countless takedown opportunities. Tavares fights for the underhook. Just over three minutes here to go in this fight. And thus far, that defense holding up so strong for Brad Tavares. Defensively, Tavares has executed about as well as he could tonight. Reverses position here. Carlos Jr. too strong there in the clinch. Nice job by Tavares to post, thereby remaining upright. Carlos is doing a really good job of controlling the under in the position. Notice how he has his head across to the opposite side. So now controlling both sides of the position against Brad Tavares. It's not 50-50 right now. But Carlos needs to try to get busy with the free hand. He can't just hold Tavares. And Eric Nixick trying to... Nixick was barking trying to get that separation. And uh, Mark Goddard separates the fighters. Back to the center now. Nice leg kick there from Carlos Jr. I mean, that inside leg kick of Tavares has landed on so many occasions. Notice when Tavares switches and, and slips punches, though. His outside hand is down, so if, if Carlos Jr. throws a hook after his jab, oh, he may be able to land. There it is again. Gets that foot off the canvas so quickly. Carlos Jr. returns. Oh, oh, beautiful nice slipping right yeah. hand. Slipping right hand by Tavares. Tremendous shape for Brad Tavares, too, because fighting off that many takedowns and then looking this fresh on your feet, it's not easy to do. Well, we've seen him fight the best of the best in the division, right? He went five rounds with Israel Asanya. I mean, nobody goes five rounds with Israel Asanya. He's finished just about everybody. You got to be extremely tough in order to push the champ uh, all the way to the final belt. What I'm most impressed with, though, is the takedown defense. I mean, it has been fantastic from the very start of the fight. Fresh, a little bit tired. He has done everything he's needed to do to stay upright. And if you've watched Shoeface's UFC career, when it comes to his entries and his strength, He's been able to get a lot of elite middleweights down. Tavares has stuffed 10 of 11 shots unofficially. I mean, that's about as good as you can get. It's almost as good as you can get. Trying to put the finishing touches on what would be a 13th UFC win in his 19th UFC appearance. I mean, if you're a shoe face, you start to run the pipe going in the back direction with your hand there. Tavares is so well versed in defending takedowns. All you got to do is try well, to set him point, down. He needs to just break off and throw bombs. You're not winning the fight trying to get this last five-second takedown. Right. All right, so Tavares and Carlos Jr. go the 15-minute distance tonight. Tavares is, why is his daughter, Zaya Lee? She'll be three in November. Looks like Daddy's coming home a winner. Official decision around the bed.
All right, the scorecards are in. Bruce Buffer has them. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the contest 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28 for the winner by unanimous decision, Brad Tavares. Huge win in a career full of them for the Hawaiian Brad Tavares and to the Benner who dropped 20 large on Antonio.